What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Eastside Fishing. My name is Rio and I want to say thank you all so much for 600 subscribers. Only about 20% of you guys who are actually watching this video right now are subscribed. So if you're not already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button just so you can stay up to date with all the videos I put out. With that being said, let's get right into the video. I don't know if many of y'all have heard of Pompano Bridge. But Pompano Ridge is pretty much a legend on the east coast of Florida regarding Pompano fishing. He's in South Florida and he's pretty much what they call the Pompano Professor. If you guys get a chance, go on Google and just Google Pompano Ridge. You can check out his website, you can check out some of the articles he's written. He is a wealth of knowledge and I want to say a huge shout out to Rich for sending me this box. Um, Rich hooked me up with a lot of great products and that's why I'm here to talk about this today. I'm going to be showing you guys a lot of the stuff that I use out on the beach personally and at the end of the video you're going to get a lot of useful information, tips, tricks, you know, a bunch of things you probably have never heard of or even thought of before and pompanorich.net is where you can get most of this stuff as well. So without saying too much, let's get right into the video. Okay, so I took one quick peek and you know I didn't look at everything in here so I don't really know 100% what's all in here. Alright. Whoa, boss boy. Okay, so the first thing, wow. I've got a bunch of really, really cool, different colored pompano jigs. Now I asked Rich specifically to send me a bunch of them anywhere from, I think it was three eighths all the way up to an ounce. Guys, take a quick look at these. This is like a standard color you'd find at your store, like a pink with a white. But this one, I've never seen it. This is gold with white. Now, a lot of people know Pompano love that gold color. And there are a lot of really nice ones in here. Like we have this one, which is a marbled with orange. We'll take a closer look at that one. So I've never really seen these before, but I do like them. You know, I try not to buy too much into the crazy colors or anything like that because most of the things that are out there for sale in retail, they're attract, they're made to attract fishermen, not fish. And you know, it's really hard sometimes to be like, oh, that looks great, but is it gonna work? Nine, nine times out of 10, you're just confident that it's gonna work, so it's gonna work. So don't get me started on what colors do work and don't work. There's a whole bunch of science behind it and I'm not trying to get into that today. So let's see here. Okay. So we've got a couple flavors of fish gum that were sent out. Let's see what the first one is. Fish gum pink shrimp. Love that color. I've actually got that in my bag right now. I don't know if you guys have heard of this one, but this is called sand fleecicle. So it's basically like your sand flea flavored artificial bait. Next one we've got, I know everybody likes this one, Pomp Candy. Pomp Candy is definitely one of my favorites. I love the colors on them, which I believe are a huge fish attractant themselves. A nice bright yellow with an orangey bright red. It does really well on the surf. Another one that I really, really enjoy using whenever the fish are being kind of picky is this chartreuse green. They also have a green shrimp and this is definitely gonna work as well. Uh, let's see what I got here. Got one more fleecicle. All right, just a little bit of a different color. This one's more or less fully orange. Let's see what else we got in here. Oh, heck yeah. I got a bag of Pompano teasers. Now these are the real deal. This is what I actually wanted more than the Pompano jigs themselves. You know, it's really hard to find quality teaser, teasers uh, and Pompano teasers usually get the same colors in the stores. And I like to experiment a little bit more, especially with different types of water clarity, water color, and where I'm fishing. Now, if you guys take a look at a couple of these, they are absolutely juicy. I feel like they're so nice. You could probably throw these as a fly for tarpon, snook. Like, just look at that. It's got that iridescent flashing on it, color changing, really, really cool. Usually you fish these about, I don't know, three to six inches above your pompano jig. 90% of the time, whenever you're pompano jigging, 
the pompano is going to hit the teaser and he's not actually going to hit the jig. The reason being is that the jig on the bottom of the, well, the jig on the bottom on the sand is puffing up that sand and creating a little bit of a, I don't know, it's stirring up some bait action basically. So when the pompano or whatever fish is in the area come by, they look around, they see all the sand kicked up, then they see this teaser just wafting in the wave right there and boom, they snatch it up. So thank you very much for those teasers, Rich. I appreciate it. Get some more of the packaging out of here. Let's see what else we've got. Okay. Awesome. Now this is exactly what I was talking about. Um, this bag has a lot of the common colors that you're gonna see. I'll show them to you really quickly. So the colors that we've got, electric chicken, yellow and all white, a personal favorite by many, many pompano fishermen. And then you're all orange and white. You guys already saw me show you the pink and white, but just in case you missed it, there's a pink and white. All right, so we've got a bunch of pompano jigs and just a little bit different sizes and colors as well. I'm really liking this so far, not gonna lie. Looks like I am gonna be set with pompano jigs for quite some time. All right, now I asked Rich to send me some floats so that way I can make a pompano rig. And one of my goals was to make a pompano rig while I have you guys here so that way you can see the materials that I use, the methods that I use as well. They're not really that different from anyone else. The only thing that I think is gonna set anyone's pompano rigs apart, maybe the pound test of line that they're using, the colors and sizes of the floats that may be able to match the hatch a little bit better, the types of hooks for better hookup ratios, etc. But all in all, they're just glorified chicken rigs. So let's go ahead and start with our pink and white bullet floats. Now, Rich has these available on his website. I'm not too sure right now what the inventory is looking like, but he's always updating them. And if you need to place a special order, just make sure and let him know that you need something special and he'll make sure to take care of you guys. Now, these are a beautiful chartreuse, yellow or green, depending on how you look at it, and white. Got some more stuff in here. Oh, wow. Got a whole bag of teasers. So, guys, with all the teasers and jigs that I have, I can probably make, probably make enough combinations to fish for the next five years. I have so many. And, you know, most of the time, as you know, we're not really jigging in very rocky areas or areas that's got a lot of structure. So you're mostly sticking to sand. And the only thing that gets these jigs and teasers worn down is the salt water dulling the hooks on them, the paint chipping or coming off of them, or just getting cut off by like mackerel, ladyfish, bluefish, stuff like that. So they should last me a pretty good bit of it. They should last me a decent bit. Now, I've already got some of these pompano floats. These are crab proof. Now the reason that Rich claims these are crab proof and I've witnessed them myself, these floats keep your bait off the bottom a lot more than your typical foam floats. I think it's the density of the foam that's being used. I'm not 100% sure on the science of that, but they definitely are more crab proof than your standard barrel floats that you buy at the store or your pill floats, whatever you'd call them. Uh, so let's see here. Oh, awesome. I got something in here. Nice, I got my Pomp Hunter decal. Thank you very much. Oh, I got another box in here too. All right. I got a little goodie bag here of some Sputnik sinkers. If I can get them out of the box. All right, there we go. Oops. So I've just got a couple long tails and a couple short tail sinkers. I don't know about you guys, but I personally prefer to use the short tail over the long tail. I think the short tail gets stuck in the sand a lot more like an anchor, and it basically keeps my line buried in the sand, if that makes sense. Compared to the long tail, my line sticks up a little bit more out of the water, and I want that thing buried in the sand down on the bottom. All right, so we've got some weights for when we make our pompano rigs. And there's something else in here. Oh, there's another, something else. Oh, there's another thing of fish gum. Woo! All right. Another pack of fish gum. Thank you very much, Rich. I really appreciate you hooking me up. Um, so let's see here. All right, guys. I don't know if many of y'all have seen this. 
But I've got an exclusive t-shirt from Fishgum. So we've got the Fishgum Pompano t-shirt. You absolutely bet your ass that I'm gonna be out on the beach catching some Pompano this upcoming season with this thing. All right. So we've got some goodies. We've got the essentials. We got our floats. We got our weights. I have some line back here that I've stocked up on. We have our fish gum. And we've got all kinds of jigs and teasers. And I believe I'll be covering most of that in another video because I want to take you guys out there with me while I'm jigging to kind of show you how it's done. So let's go right into the next part of this video. So let's tie a pompano rig. Now, first thing you're gonna need is either a coast lock or a snap swivel. I usually like to just keep it very simple and just tie a fisherman's knot. Wrap that thing up about five, six times. Go back through the first loop that you created through the second loop that you created, and then back through the first loop one last time. Make sure and wet your lines. All right, so that's my snap swivel attached. Okay, snap swivel. That's your first part of your pompano rig. I always like to go at least 12 to 14 inches above that to start my first loop. So we're going to be tying dropper loops on these rigs and you're basically going to have that much distance which is about 12 to 14 inches and i like to make my dropper loops at least four okay let's say about three to six inches long depending on how i'm feeling that day so tie your dropper loop you go one wrap okay so once more one more time we're going to take your right hand or my right hand and go around to the front of your leader now, the remainder of your main line from your leader, we're going to make a loop in the center of that. We're going to wrap that six times. Two, three, four, five, six. Pass the big loop through the small loop. Pull tight, wet it a little bit, you're all set. So that's our first dropper loop. I'm going to go up about another 12 to 14 inches and do that one more time. This one I'm actually gonna make appropriately sized. Sometimes if you're making the dropper loops, don't make them too small because what'll happen is when you go to tie them down, they will shrink. And I like my dropper loops to kind of leave my weight or my floats dangling a little bit more. I don't want them attached to the line very stationary. I want them to have a little bit more of a natural action. So there we go. As you can see, I got my two lines. I'm gonna go ahead and cut myself off here from my spool of leader. And this is where I'm gonna attach my swivel. And after I'm done with this part, that's where the fun stuff comes in. And that's actually building or tying your pompano rig. Alrighty. So today, I think that I'm gonna go with the pink and white. I just found these hooks and I am really ecstatic about them. I haven't seen a lot of guys really use this style of hook for pompano, especially this small. Yep, but I, I really like them. So one thing that you just saw me do is whenever I'm making these loops, I like to just kind of crimp the, the tag end of your dropper. Let's say I like to crimp the loop end of the dropper. Always helps the hooks and floats and everything slide on there much easier. Now direction of the floats, sometimes I just play it up. I don't really care if I want it with the cone part facing up, cone part facing down. I'll pretty much just do whatever I feel that day. You have to always imagine, you know, how your rig is going to look underwater. So is this thing going to be floating around like that? Or is it going to be the opposite direction floating around? I don't know. And I don't know what the fish really like. 
So let's just pretend they like it like this. Go ahead, thread your hook through your loop, slide that right over there. If you're fishing a circle hook, always go through the front part of the eye. That's just how circle hooks are designed to work, meant to face the direction of the line. All right, turn this one around. Okay, and this is just for demonstration purposes. I can tie a pompano rig in less than a minute if I really wanted to. It takes me about 30 seconds if I'm really doing a lot of them. But this is the very last, oops, this is the very last part of your pompano rig. You've got both of our hooks, both of our floats. We have sufficient amount of line and leader. We have a good sized dropper coming off of there. We have a lot of room between both ends of terminal tackle, so you're not gonna spook any fish that may be checking your, your bait out. Pompano are sight feeders, but they're kind of just like a jack. If there's food and there's enough of them, they're gonna eat it. You just don't want to turn them off before they even get a chance to do that. So snap on our weight, and guys, we are ready to go pompano fishing. All right, so there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me with a like, and until next time, 